Amen. Have your Bibles tonight. Turn to me. Turn with me to Acts chapter 16. All doors are open. And I just have to look down and say that. As we look into Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Amen. And preach uh, on all doors are open. And uh, and I know what faith church sometimes Christians have to suffer. Amen. For make for the law. Now say that again. Sometimes Christians will suffer for the laws. I remember one time I was <clears throat> working at the pipe shop at Sword, and they had a cutback. And uh, guess where I went? I went to the broco. Now, if you never worked in a, a paper mill, you don't know what a broco is. <laughs> That's where they throw all the slabs down from all the machines up there, 75 inches wide. Three or four inches thick, and all you could do is just move something just halfway, amen. amen. And uh, there was a man there uh, that I got acquainted with, talked to the Lord about, and he got saved, Brother Bill. One well, after he uh, got himself to the, to the Lord and everything, he died. That's how close he was for eternal life. And I hated that job. I got, I, you know, when you go into labor reserve, you know, you can get your kind of job. But right. then you went to the finish department and, and it was all clean and uh, the, a lot of easier work. And they sent you right back to work in the road call and you suffered. And I had to suffer for about two or three months there that I could win that one soul. Think about it. Sometimes Christians will suffer, amen, for the loss. Yeah. Amen. And you know what? God will always bless you. Amen. And I, I thank God for that tonight. Praise God. And I'm going to preach on tonight. All doors were open. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Everybody got it? Now just give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Heavenly Father, God, tonight we thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Lord, give you this message, Lord, tonight for a reason. Lord, you've changed everything. And God, we're glad. God, that we can be led by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask God. That you'll bless everyone here tonight, Lord, that you'll also, Lord, bless my throat tonight that I can be able to preach what you got given me, Father. Father, yes. we pray, God, that you open the hearts and minds of everyone yes. here tonight, Jesus. God, for those that will listen to me tonight, God, my voice, God, Lord, Lord somewhere, somehow you will touch them. Because somebody needs to hear this, Lord. God, we give you the praise of Lord the honor. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, Paul and Silas. They had to suffer. Right. I mean, they were doing something for the Lord. Anytime you're doing something for the Lord, you better look out because the devil is going to try you. And God's going to allow it to happen because church, God gets control of everything. Now, I thank God he got a shield around you and I. Amen. He tells us that in the book of Job. And the only way the devil can get at us is when God allows him to do it. And God just don't let you suffer for nothing. Amen. So we see at midnight then, Paul and Silas, they, been, they had been beaten, chained up, slammed, and everything in the back of a cell. And, and they were suffering for this. Amen. And it, said, and it didn't stop them from worshiping the Lord. Amen. The devil tried to stop them. Amen. And I think, church, we'll live in the time that we are blessed. We are a blessed nation tonight. Because church, he was left up to the devil. Now, he's already took prayer out of school. Right. He's took the Bible out of school. He took the Pledge of Allegiance out of school. If he could, he could, he would shut the doors of the church and just in a heart, man. Yes, yes, and church, a lot of nations have, so we, we better really appreciate what God has done. So we are in a blessed place. And while we can, we better worship the Lord. We better praise Him. We better take the advantage of the freedom stuff we got. But here, Paul and Silas now, they were suffering, amen, because they done something for the Lord. And he didn't stop them. When God, the devil tries to stop you, that's when you need to shout the most. That's when you need to worship him the most. That's when you need to praise him the most. Because you know what? God has a purpose for everything. And as we look in the scriptures here tonight, we're going to see a purpose that God has left them there, not only for, for salvation for them, but for the world. Amen. Now this one is saying, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, 
so that the foundations of the prisons were broken, and immediately all doors were open. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, see, God has already shaken. God has opened the doors, amen, tonight. All doors are now open. Now, church, if you read your Bible, a lot of doors have been closed. The devil will try to close every door that he can, but the Bible says in Revelation that when God opens a door, no man can shut it, and when God shuts a door, no man can open it. So glory to God. So tonight we're seeing, amen, that God has opened some doors tonight for people, amen, to understand and to know. Amen. And first thing God, God has done for us. But let me read just a little bit more tonight because there's a reason that why that God had opened the doors, amen, for Paul and Silas. And the Bible says in, in uh, verse 26, the latter part of it, all doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison was awakened out of sleep and seeing the prisoners open doors, the doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and, and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do, amen, to be saved? Glory to God. I mean, they, that, that, that was worth everything that Paul and Silas, yes. amen, has done, amen. But you know what, church, did not only did God open the door for this prison, for those around him, but God has opened the doors for us tonight, yes. amen. amen. The door, amen, was closed because, because we were Gentiles. But thank God Jesus came and opened the doors for all Gentiles and for all the, all the world, praise God. I thank God tonight. I don't care whether you're black or white, yeah. whether you're rich or poor, amen. It doesn't make no difference to God. If you come to Jesus tonight, yeah. amen, the door has been opened through Jesus Christ that you can be saved tonight and be delivered tonight and be set free of the devil, yes. amen, can, can do nothing about it, praise God. And church salvation is so easy, and people try to make it so hard. I remember when I got saved a long time ago, I was saved by the ABC. Amen. Now the ABC means one thing. First of all, you got to admit that you are a sinner. Right. And I had to recognize I was a sinner. Yes. You was a sinner and you were lost. Praise God. But you know what, church? When you recognize that you are a sinner and acknowledge that you are a sinner, then you got to confess amen. Amen, that you are a sinner and confess your sins to Jesus. I'm not talking about Mary, yeah. and I'm not talking yeah. about the Pope. Yeah. I'm talking about Jesus because He is the only yeah. mediator that stands between God and man. Amen. Yeah. I church, the church don't stand between God and man. Right. The, the Pope don't stand between God and man. The world doesn't stop between God and man. But Jesus is the only yeah. mediator yeah. that stands before God and man. So I had to confess my sins, amen, to Jesus. Glory to God. Now thank God tonight, praise God, that I believe the ABC, acknowledge, believe, and confess your sins. That's, that's how simple, amen, the message is tonight. And so many people try to make it so hard right. when the door is always already open for salvation. And we need to tell them, and all you got to do is come to Jesus. Yes. Not put your name in a book somewhere, yes. or in a church somewhere, or, or believe what some of the preachers may say. You just come to Jesus, acknowledge, amen, and, and believe, and confess that you are a sinner, and Jesus he is the only one that can save you. Now thank God tonight for that. Praise God. And church, let me tell you something. I believe with all my heart tonight the door was open for salvation. But you know, the Bible said that Jesus didn't stop there. See, God likes to do a finished work in our life. And so the, and, and nobody at that time, just the special people, and could receive the, the Holy Ghost. And it just when God had a special assignment or something to do to, do to man, he would, he would put the allow the Holy Spirit to come up on somebody that for God can use it. Amen. You know what, church? God opened the door for us that everybody could have, amen, the baptism of the Holy right. Spirit. Amen. But Jesus had to die, Brother James, amen, for, for everybody 
to, to be able to receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, first of all, we have to receive the Holy Ghost when we get saved because, see, we have to be bound ties into Christ. In other words, we've got to be in Christ, and the only way we can be in Christ is to be baptized in the body of Christ Amen. through the Holy Spirit. So tonight, yes. every, the door was open for everybody yes. to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost or be into God's kingdom. Amen. But you know what, church? He opened the door to everybody, every believer that could not only be, have the Holy Ghost in them, but they could have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that they can do a work for Jesus. See, the churches are dying today because they're not preaching the Holy right. Ghost. The churches are dying because it takes the Holy Ghost, amen, to be a witness, amen, to a lost and dying world. Be able to operate all the gifts and, the, and have the fruits of the Spirit in them. And church, we as a church, we should be praying and seeking, amen, for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, in tongue, as the Spirit gives them them. Now, church, we are a Pentecostal church. Now, I know some people don't like in the Pentecostal Church of God. But when it comes to, amen, to missionary work, and when the, when the devil is on the rampage, and all the principalities and powers, they said a long time ago that when the, the different organizations were sent, the, sending the people across the water into work, they the devil, I mean, they were devil yeah. presented and everything else. And the, and the, 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 the demons would run them out. So they find time to a Pentecostal church uh, and wouldn't know if they would go in and be a missionary. But you know what? They couldn't run a Pentecostal demon baptism right. of the Holy Ghost right. minister. Right. And church, this is what the world needs today right. is some baptism, Holy Ghost filled, uh, missionary people. And church, we are a missionary church. Right. We need to be out there witnessing because he said, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you should receive power, yeah. amen, to be a witness to a lost and dying yes. world. And the churches are dying is because the, the, the churches are not filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The door is open, church, and everybody that watches and thirsts and hungry can have it. Yes. Because that's why Jesus died. He opened the door for salvation. He opened the door, praise God, for the baptism of the Holy Amen. Ghost. And every church member, every Christian should be praying and seeking, God, I want more. When you get to a place you think that you've got it all, you don't have it all because you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You are not near enough having it all. Right. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Because it takes the it takes the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the being filled up that you can be a witness. Yes. Jesus told the disciples, He said, You go yes. back to Jerusalem and you go up to the upper room and you stay there until I send the Holy Ghost back. Now they already received the Holy Ghost before this happened. Because the Bible said Jesus breathed on the earth disciples and he breathed the Holy Ghost upon them. That would mean he was they were born into the kingdom of God. But on the 15th day when Jesus comes when he was crucified, and we're back up, amen, the Bible tells us that he sent the Holy Ghost back and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them to us. And they, they weren't just told to stay in Jerusalem and stay there until they were due to depart. He said, you stay there, amen, until you are endued with power. Then you can go out, amen, amen and preach the kingdom of God. And church, that hasn't changed. Right. We, the doors are open tonight, all doors yes. from salvation, amen, be filled with the Spirit. And I thank God tonight, God, we be filled with the Spirit. Do you realize when they begin to be filled with the Spirit, things begin to happen? And the door, the church, I know that God heals. He's a, he's a healer, and He's a deliverer. And we don't see it very much anymore because it takes the work of the Holy Spirit in people that they can be used, amen, to heal, amen, people. And church, I'm here to tell you, the door is open for healing. I thank God the door is, is yes. All we got to do is to, to believe that God opened the door through Jesus Christ, amen, for us to be healed. And sometimes, church, because we're not healed instantly, now, church, God uses all kinds amen. of things. Yes. I believe it was, uh, was it Isaiah or Hezekiah. The Bible says that Hezekiah was sick unto death. Right. Amen. And he thought that he was, in fact, he was dying. And God said, I believe it was Isaiah to Hezekiah. And you know what he told him? He didn't say you are going to heal. He said, I want you to tell him to get some raisins and put it on that, that tumor or that ulcer that he had that was going to kill him. 
And the Bible said that, that Hezekiah was healed. Amen. So however God wants to heal you, if he wants to use a doctor, you amen, you listen to the doctor. Amen. If you're going to go to the doctor, listen to what the doctor has to say. And there's some people that when they go to the doctor, they waste their money and waste their time and waste the doctor's time because they will not listen amen, to what the doctor says. If you're going to be that way, you might as well not even go to them. Amen. 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 Hello? Yes. Now, I'm not, not, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not knocking the doctors because they've done great things and they're doing great things. You know that like Jesus had a doctor with him wherever he went? That's right. Oh, Dr. Luke. I think I praise God for Dr. Luke. Amen. He was with Jesus everywhere he went. Now, i got a couple of doctors that go wherever I go. Amen. How about you? Dr. Luke. I said, how about you? Amen. That doesn't mean you don't have no faith. It means you don't have enough faith. Whatever, if you've got faith, because you still believe in Jesus. Yes. But the door is open. God opened every door that we need to worship Him and, amen, to get us to heaven. I yes. thank God tonight, amen, that, that, people, that God is still the healer. And sometimes people who don't get healed, it because they don't do it, Brother Daniel, to the, the, to, to the way of the, of the Scripture. Right. Now, the Bible tells us that God is a healer. And he's always in the midst. How many believe that Jesus is in the midst Amen. of us today? Amen. How many believe the Holy Spirit is in the midst yes. of us? Amen. How many believe that God is in the midst of us? Yes. Well, the Bible tells us if any of you is sick, amen, call for the elders of the church and let them be on the Lord. And some people will not come and say, Pastor, I, I, I need a touch. I Amen. need a healing. And I need God to touch me. But you won't come because I don't know why you don't come. But you wait, amen, for the pastor to call up people that are sick. And some people will, will, will go thousands of miles, okay. amen, to a special person. Amen. And, and, and the Bible said Jesus is the healer in the church. Why do you have to drive a thousand miles to get healed? If you've got enough faith to drive a thousand miles to get healed, why don't you just have enough faith to come to church amen. and call for yes. the elders of the church and let them anoint you? Yes, amen. Hello. All doors were open. Yes, they were. Think about it. I just preached what the Lord gave me just a few minutes ago. I thank God tonight that every door, amen, contained to salvation is open. And pray that everybody can be saved. Everybody can be touched. And I thank God tonight there was a time that we couldn't worship Him. And there was a time that we couldn't praise him. Only the Jews could praise him and worship him right. because they had the they had the temple, they had the amen, the anointing and everything. But thank God, God changed that when Jesus went to baptism and broke the uh, uh, well, ripped the ripped the the what you would call the veil. Yeah. And when he ripped the veil, it made room for all the Gentiles, yeah. for them all the world. That door was open. Praise God that we could worship him and praise him and glorify him. And recognize, praise God, that He inhabits our place. Yes. Thank God tonight the door is open, all the doors are open, and let us be able to walk through. The Bible says, if they grab, like I said in Revelation, if God opens the door, let us walk in. If He closes the door, let us turn around and find another open door. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh, I thank God tonight. Jesus tells us, as we talk about the open door for healing and different. James said, call for the elders of the church. Amen. Now, that's what we need to do. That's right. Just call for the elders and ask God. See, I know there has to be enough people in church anymore that, to, that believes in healing mm -hmm. and, and, believe in, and walk with the way God wants them to walk and they, they can still heal people. Yes. Amen. Amen. The door of healing was open, church. Jesus opened the door. And if, we, if you would just sometimes begin to wonder, how did Jesus do this? I mean, Jesus suffered. I mean, to, to open the door for healing, all you have to do is go to Isaiah 53 and see what Jesus did yes. that we can have a healing tonight. He opened the door and he suffered. I mean, he yes. suffered that no man could imagine. Amen. He took on every stride. I mean, his beard was plucked. I mean, he was beaten. He was bruised. Yes. And thorn was up on his head. All these things were done. Amen. That man could have an atonement and that we could have a healing take yes. place yes. in our body, spiritually and physically. Yes. And, there, and the door was open. And still, we do not take advantage of it. Amen. Amen. 
And now here today, he nailed it to the cross. He nailed a sickness. He nailed the curse. He nailed, he nailed a salvation. I mean, he, he, all the blood was shed. That praise God, the door was open. Yes. That we could be saved, healed, and delivered yes. spiritually and physically. What we have to do is just believe tonight that yes. Jesus has done yes. the work. He finished it, and we don't need nothing else. Thank God Jesus was crucified on Calvary. He suffered on Calvary, and we can have salvation. And thank God that door was open. Every door was open. All doors are open tonight that we can have the blessings of God. Salvation, healing, deliverance, praise, and worship. He made a way that we could all worship Him. Now thank God for that tonight. Amen. He made a way for the Holy Ghost tonight. He made a way. Now the Bible tells us that Jesus, that the devil, he had us bound. Amen. He, I mean, he had us in captivity. But the Bible says Jesus came down. Now thank God for that. That we can stand against the devil. He, the Bible said Jesus destroyed every works of the devil. And you know what? I thank God tonight that, Jesus, that God gave us an open door, amen, for our healing, amen, and now so we can stand against the devil. Church, we at one time we could stand against the devil. One time we were held in captivity and was there nothing we could do about when Jesus, amen, hung on Calvary and that blood was shed and he gave up his life. He, uh, he, the Bible says that, that he conquered the, the devil, and therefore we, we are now are, oh, we can overcome the devil. And he gave us the word that we can uh, we can know, Amen, that, that we can overcome the devil. Yes, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter six, verse ten, God wants us to be strong. That we look in Ephesians chapter six, verse ten, says, "Finally, my brethren." Be strong in the Lord and in the power. See, we got to walk in the power of God. Now, we know that we, we have the, we're, we're his children, but he said, we gotta, how do you walk in the power of God? We walk in the power of God through his word. Yes. He said, we, we put on the whole word of God that we can stand, withstand the evil day. We can, amen. we can overcome the devil. That's what it says. Find my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He opened the door, Brother James. He set us free. Yes. He broke the chains. And, amen. Come, the Bible said that in, in, in the, where Paul and Silas were, when Jesus opened that door, he said the shackles fell off. Thank God to yes. the shackles, Brother James, are broken. Thank God the shackles yes. have come off. And the devil can no longer yeah. bound us. The no no devil can no longer have power over us because the shackles were broken. Yeah. And I thank God tonight we can walk in yeah. freedom. Praise God because Jesus opened the door for salvation. Yeah. He opened the door for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He opened the door that we could praise Him, worship Him. And He opened the door that we could overcome the devil. Yeah. I thank God we're a devil's yeah. over overcoming church tonight yeah. because we know that the door has been opened yeah. and we have been set free. Oh, can yeah. somebody praise? God. Somebody, somebody can say amen. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. The door is open. Yeah. Let's take the advantage of the open door. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You go. Thank God. I thank God tonight. Praise God. He opened the door for me. Yes. He opened the, the door for the church. Amen. That needs yes. to come and be able to worship Him tonight. The church, I thank God. You know what, church? He, he opened the door to death, hell, and the grave. Yes, amen. Amen. When, I, when you and I died before Jesus come, amen, as we look at the, in the chapter 11 of Hebrews, all the people, all those all those people that, that died, they, there was David, there was David with three Hebrew children. There was Joseph. There was all these men of our they, they They died. Yes. But they went into paradise. The devil held them captive. Yes. Could you believe the great men of God? And they were still held, Brother James. Held. But thank God they were they're no longer held captive. And thank God we are no longer yes. held, held, held captive. Because the door had been yes. opened. Yes. He went down right into the paradise. Yes. Amen. Down in hell was paradise. Amen. He didn't go to the, the far one because there was no need for it. He went down there in paradise on the other side of hell. And he set the captive free. Yes. And we've been free. 
said, I left my want you to fix it. The doors have been open for you. Whatever you're going through with, that door has been open. And that shackles you believe that you're shackled with, you're held captive with, it has been broken if you believe and trust God. The devil has no hold over us. Amen. Stop your complaints, stop your murmur. Have faith in God and believe God has opened the door. Amen. Would you stand tonight, Good to be in the house of the Lord. I feel in God's message tonight. Amen.